They are a blessing. Amen. I want to see ten kids in their service every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to see ten new families. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your faith out and reach out. That's what you do. Praise God. Well, let's open the word in prayer. Father, thank you for the anointing of God as you minister uh, in me and through us and then through through your spirit to each person here, Lord. We just we, we are taught of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for the teaching. And I thank you, Lord, that I do do my part by speaking as an oracle of God. And we just give you the glory, honor, and praise and blessings and oh thank you. Just thank you so much for your love and your goodness and your faithfulness today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's lesson is Jesus. It's titled Jesus Today. And when many people think of Jesus, they only they, most people think of only the the baby Jesus. Okay, and and then a little less, but uh, then they think people will think worldwide. I'm that is I'm talking uh, about the death and resur- death burial and resurrection of Jesus. And even less than that, there are people who are thinking about when Jesus comes again. All these areas are great areas to think about. But what is Jesus doing today? What is he doing today? What is the Spirit doing today? Uh, does he have a ministry still today? Yes. Jesus is presently ministering more than he's ever done when he walked the earth. He's doing more now than he did when he had walked off through Jerusalem. Just by sheer numbers of believers alone, he's doing more. That's, that's part of the reason he says we'll do greater works, because we'll be doing everything Jesus did, raise the dead, heal the sick, get people saved, help them to have be born again, and then be filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't even get people filled with the Holy Spirit or born again until after he paid the price. Amen. He is working in the earth today more than when he ever preached and taught the masses, worked the miracles even more than his death, burial, and resurrection. Because it is his current ministry. That's what he's doing today. It is It must be. His current ministry must be our most... It, we must be most interested and in completing, while still in our earth suits, the ministry that Jesus is doing today. And we represent that to the world, to our brothers and sisters. And the first thing I want to talk about is that Jesus is our eternal priest and king. Now, he's both king and priest. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, 22nd verse. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, verse 23, also there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchanging priesthood. So what's he being right now? He's being the priest, the high priest. Verse 25, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost. Everybody save to the uttermost. Let's say it. Save, save to the uttermost. That means you, he's, he's, he's going to save you as far as you can be in need of salvation. He'll save you that far and more. It's the uttermost. When you're saved with the Lord, he saves you. Amen? He delivers you. He, re, he redeems you. We're saved to the uttermost. Those who come to God through him, since he always lives, to make intercession or stand in the gap for them. You understand, Jesus' current day ministry is standing still in the gap for man. He mediated this covenant. We know the scriptures say that in, in that same chapter. He mediated it. And in chapter 8, it says he mediated. In other words, he, him and the Father made a deal and it can't be broken. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Bless the Lord. Jesus always, always able to bridge us to the Father. There's no gap too big that Jesus can't bridge us. 
to the Father. Because he's God. Through his blood. He is our eternal priest. And since he's there, since he's there we don't have to be uh, once a year doing something like they used to do in the old covenant. We don't have to do that. Because it was done once and for all. And it's still done once and for all as the high priest. He doesn't change. Amen. Amen. That means we always, why were they so excited about, I guess it's Yom Kippur, right? Why are they so excited about it? Because that's when they, all their sins get washed away, right? That's when they covered. And then probably no sooner than the day is even over, they've already sin again. But there is, that, there is that picture of the cleansing that God gives us. But in, in Jesus' blood, we're, there's always the cleansing flow. It never stops. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus' ministry today is always to stick by us because he can't deny his love for us. You understand? He wants to stick by us. He, he can't deny his love for us. He's always faithful to us. And if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11th verse. Now, this could have been a song that they had sung, the early church, um, or it could have been just a saying. But uh, many scholars believe this is a song they sang. And I've, I've read this before to you. And it says in the verse 11, This is a faithful saying, For if we die with him, we shall also live with him. We need to count ourselves as being crucified in Christ. Uh, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen? The Amen. Spirit of God. Let the dead body have no say in your current life. It's something we have to do when we consider the Lord as our high priest. we got to let our, let our body stay dead on that cross. Amen? Amen? And if we endure, we shall also reign with him. See, you understand? He's the king of kings, so he's reigning right now. Amen? He's still reigning. Even if the world doesn't know it, he's still reigning king. And we'll reign with him as well. Because we're identified. See, quitters won't reign with Christ the king. If you quit, you're not going to reign. You're not going to reigning, meaning you're not going to walk in the authority. You're not going to walk in the power and the gifts and the things of God if you quit. Okay? You don't throw in the towel with the Lord. If you throw in the towel, then you're going to lose. Uh, you throw in the towel, if you're dead, when you throw it, if you're dying, when you're throwing in that towel, you'll stay dead. Okay? But you don't quit. You stick with the Lord. Let him coach you. Let him show you. Let him guide you, you'll reign as a king with him. See, he's reigning as a king. Now, the world will recognize that when he comes back again, but that doesn't change his kingdom, does it? The kingdom's still the same. It's in heaven. And he brings it to earth. So, so only those who keep going will succeed in life as a king, as one who reigns with the Lord Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of People going back to the world. I mean, they were they're church people that they have gone back to the world. There's a lot of them happening. Why? Because I'll tell you the main reason is they didn't have a real relationship with God, and they got into a form of godliness. That's why they're going back to the world. You really see the Lord, and you stay with the, you'll you'll stay with Him. Amen. I mean, although it is possible to see the Lord and then totally end up going to hell, that is true. People will go to hell who knew, who were fully saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, walking with the Lord. There are already people in hell Amen. that once knew God, once walked with Jesus, and then committed the unpardonable sin and went to hell mm. when they died. There's no hope for them because they chose the world. You can't quit. If you want to reign with Christ, you can't throw in the towel like some of these people up there, are real famous you know, uh, un, uh, what do they call it? Um, oh, I forgot what they—they they have a terminology for it. But it, it's you know they're unha they're just totally leaving God. You know, deconstructing. That's it. They're deconstructing their faith. Well, you deconstruct your faith, you deconstruct your life. <laughs> All right. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. Now, Jesus does not want to deny anybody. In fact, he paid a price so that he would be able to stay by our side. But if we deny him in this world, if we deny him in this world, you will be denied by him. 
And this is, becomes all the more important when you consider the persecutions that are rising worldwide and even here in the United States. You can't deny the Lord. You can't make excuses or apologize for being a Christian who right. believes the Bible Amen. and aren't moving off your Bible. I don't apologize for that. I ain't afraid to tell somebody that. Amen. And if you can't be. I cannot deny him. Amen. He doesn't deny me. That's right. You ask the Lord, the only because I, I won't deny Him, He'll never deny me, never, not once. Amen. Amen. And even if you do deny, look how quick and forgiving He was of Peter. All you gotta do is come back to Him, right? Amen. But stay with Him. Do not deny Him, no matter what the circumstance. Verse thirteen: If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. You see, we can not We can rest assured that he will always be faithful to us even when we are not always walking right with him, as long as you don't deny it. You understand that denying Jesus is way too important for any of you to ignore that. You cannot deny Jesus. I mean, you can by choice, but if you do, you will be denied. So don't. You are dead in the water unless you remember your allegiance and the loyalty in Christ. You, you, you're dead in the water. So today's ministry that Jesus is doing, one of the things he's doing is, as the priest, as the king of kings and lord of lords and the priest, the high priest, is his ministry is to guide us in our earth life. His ministry is to guide us in, his, in our earth life. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad that you don't have to walk blindly? I'm glad that I, I'm glad that he knows each step that I can take, each step that he's planned, each each idea that he has for me, for you, for us. He has it all planned out. He is a planner. Amen. Amen. And all we gotta do is make our plans in in line with his. And the best way that God communicates with us, I believe, is by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. That is the absolute best way. His unction or his anointing. This is an, one of my favorite verses. And I quote it a lot because I, you know why I quote this verse a lot? Because I use it a lot. <laughs> you understand? Have you ever noticed the scriptures that you use a lot, you end up quoting a lot and then leaning heavily upon? Imagine if you learn more about the Bible. How many more scriptures you could just, I mean, just pack yourself and lean upon him. God's word will not fail. That's right. Amen. Amen. I thank God that his word is like a rock, which to build my house and not be moved. Even when the storms come, even when the winds and the storms and the rain rages, the waves crash. My house will stand because it's based on the Word. Amen. Your house stands because it's based on the Word. Amen. And First John chapter 2, verse 20, my, one of my favorite verses. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. He guides us by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's witness on the inside is the absolute best, in my opinion, way that God speaks to, to us. I know some people, uh, look, I know people like to hear the voice of God. I know people like to hear or have some uh, angelic visitation or, uh, you know, some kind of something going on that you can physically see. I know some people, in fact, way too many people like other people to always tell them what to do. I'm not against giving advice, but I'm not wanting one of those likes to tell you what you should or should not do. Except to say, you go find out from the Lord, read what's in the Bible, you find it in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, take the whole counsel of God, allow Him to teach you, allow Him to talk to you, you have an unction, you have an anointing of the Holy One, and you know all things. I don't, I, I mean, I will do my best to give advice, and I do. But I ain't telling you how to live your life. I'm not going to do that. I'll tell you what the Word says, and you choose, you choose what you're going to do. 
Okay? Hallelujah. Because the Lord is in you, isn't he? Amen. 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 And, it's, and I'm so glad that he's in each of us individually. Not, I mean, he's in our group corporately, of course. The Bible says he is. Two or more gathered in his name, right? There he is in the midst, so he's here. The Bible talks about in Revelation where he walked among the churches. The seven churches that he had John write letters to. He walked among them. So yeah, he's here that way. But he's in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. That is the best way. That is the quickest way to achieve an end goal. Yes, that's right. To follow the witness of the Holy Spirit. Because it's like instantaneous. <laughs> you know? You, you, you know, you don't have to deal with getting shocked hearing the voice of God as thunders and waters. I mean, John fell down as a dead man when that happened, right? But that witness on the Holy Spirit, I don't have to deal with all that stuff. I just know on the inside that I know. Amen. I believe that is the best, the best way to walk with God. And be guided. So he's guiding us today. He's showing you today. He's got a plan for you. Amen. And if you're having struggle finding that plan, then be encouraged because he has one and he's not trying to hide it. I mean, if he took the time to make up your plan, he wants you to understand it and he wants you to follow it. And he's, he's equipped you to do it. He's not hiding anything from you. You can't allow worry to set in. And that's another thing we need to do. Jesus will catch all our cares that we throw at him. And when I think of that, I just think of like when we, um, you know, I know baseball practice will be probably spring break, you know, spring uh Training will probably be delayed, it says they say this year. But I just imagine Jesus being that catcher. You know? And I'm going, okay. Oh. <laughs> See? Good thing I let him catch me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Marley. You have to fix your flower. <laughs> Amen. See? Sometimes you may fall when you try to throw that ball. Good thing he caught it. Huh? <laughs> That's how I picture him. He's a catcher. He's a good catcher. Yes, he is. See, Philippians... Let's go to Philippians. Familiar verse. For many of us. Philippians chapter 4. Sixth verse. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. And the peace or the shalom of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. This scripture makes it, and this, this, this scripture right here, it says, you have to be anxious for nothing. Everybody say, not be worried. Not be worried. So what am I mean? What, what, what am I, my point is? If you are allowing yourself or giving yourself permission to worry, then you won't get the peace of God that you need to guard your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, you want the peace of God, but as long as you're sitting there worrying, sweating, fretting, fearful, as long as you're sitting there doing that, guess what you're not doing? Allowing the peace of God to guard your heart. You have to 
throw that ball at Jesus. He's a great catcher. And some more scripture. Some more scripture. And, and that's the thing. You can't apply your faith even for the scripture if you are allowing yourself to worry. You give yourself permission to worry. God can't help you. Because if you don't do your part, he can't do his part. He's never, he's not one of those gods who, you know, everything's about him. What's he say? I'm a servant of all. Okay? That's what the Lord is. He, he makes himself a servant to us. I mean, you'd think, how's the king of kings? Well, that's the way he chose it. That's not something I chose. That's something he chose. Because he knows that we're, as his children, that if we will do the same things that he's doing, being a service to one another, that things will go well. It's the love of God. And if you want your understanding to not get in the way of God's answers, you have to not worry. You have to choose. And believe me, just make that adjustment down on the inside. The Holy Spirit will be there to help you to quit worry, to choose not to worry about a thing. I don't care. It could be the end of the day. Amen. It could be the last hour, the final minute. Don't worry. Cast it on the Lord. Amen. Amen. And even if you do fail, get it under the blood. Do not worry again. Cast it on the Lord. Uh, another scripture we should look at, probably is Colossians 3. Just flip that over to a couple, couple, couple pages there. Colossians 3.15. Again, we see something here. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. So once you're decided you're not going to be anxious, the Bible says that he'll give you, he'll give you, he'll let the peace of God rule your heart. And once you decide to do that, this is what it says. And let the peace of God or the shalom of God rule in your hearts. And like an umpire, thinking, thinking about baseball again. And like an umpire, the umpire says, Jig what? Right? You know, let them call the shots. Let the let God call be the umpire. Let him call the shots. Uh, you know, and but yeah, I didn't throw the ball. No. He he somebody threw the ball at you. You're at bat. Okay, we're in the national league. The pitcher's bad. Okay. As a pitcher, it's my turn to bat. When I'm up there bat, let the umpire call it. And that's what he'll do. He'll call the shots. And, and it'll be peace. It'll be at rest. There'll be a, a resting on the inside. You, there, there won't be that torment of not knowing. You'll be at rest. You'll be at peace. And when you're at peace, that's what calls the shots. And be thankful. Thankful that God got it right. Amen. Amen. God got it right. You cast your cares on the Lord. And then let me read this again here. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you also you were called in one body and be thankful. Now I find that very interesting that, that in that verse that it, said, it includes because you were called in one body. And, and the scripture make, makes this emphasis, and it's an interesting emphasis to me, about, since I'm seeing this thing about the unity of the Lord in the body of Christ. Uh, I'm seeing this over and over. I, I, I mean, I, I'm hearing brothers and sisters all around uh, uh, on Zoom, when I go to Zoom meetings or things like that, all of the believers that I've been listening to, they all are talking about unity. If I go to another place, you know, another they're talking about unity. And unity is 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 awesome. Now, here is something that was interesting to me. <clears throat> Part of the reason that you will experience the shalom of God is because of the unity in the body of Christ. In other words, 
as brothers and sisters on the, in the Lord, we lean heavily on each other as a community. We have to lean heavily on each other. Part of my peace, you understand peace, the Shalom version of it, uh, Billy Graham always says, nothing missing, nothing broken. Part of the, uh, part of the fulfillment of, of, of your peace will be because you're in unity with his church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. Because you stay in, you, because you don't pull yourself out and hang around outside of it, but you put yourself in it. Look what Ephesians chapter 4.16 to further emphasize this. Ephesians 4.16 comes to play here. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. There is, everybody say supplies. supplies. You see, every, every one of you have a supply. Every joint supplies. You see, if the every joint supplies, then some of what you need to have nothing missing, nothing broken, will be dependent on your unity to his church, capital C. And like I said, I'm hearing all the all the leaders. I heard it yesterday. I was on a Bible study, and they were talking about unity. A, a, a pastor in Columbia, she talked about the unity. Praise God. This is the message, because this is the glorious church. God is, that's how God's emerging in glorious church. He's bringing us in unity. He's, he's causing us as brothers and sisters in the Lord to believe in, in his word more than our governments or anything. I mean, look. <clears throat> and I tell you, I've enjoyed, since I've been on this journey with the Lord, and it really has been a journey, uh, you know, especially with this Partners for Transformation prayer, joining in with other churches and other brothers and sisters in the Lord in our local area, in our region. And we've expanded twice as much into this year. We got, we got, well, we got like twice as much. And it's into Virginia now. And, and uh, uh, as I've been doing that, I, you know, we've been praying together, making friends. We've gone out and preached together, Jesus, to the people last year several times. We, 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 we prayed together. Uh, the things of the Spirit. And I don't despise prophecy. And prophecy has come and flowed in these meetings that we've done. And because of, of all this, you know, I've been enjoying the supply that God has been giving and providing me as a pastor who's looking over a flock, is the one who's, who's interested in your life and seeing your life prosper, be blessed, to grow up and do the things that God needs you to do to fulfill your purpose to, and, to, to, uh, and to shine as an example of what God can do. That's what you are. You're, an, you're someone that God wants to shine as an example of his goodness. That's, that's who we are. Amen. We're each individual. You know, by, why do you think he personally gives us the spirit, each one of us? Because he's wanting us to shine Amen. as an example of his goodness. And, and, and as I've allowed people, I, you know, I'm trying, I don't like to control people, you know? Maybe sometimes, you know, I ought to be a little bit more controlling. Uh, and other times, uh, I'm too controlling. And other times, you know, I'm just right. Okay? I, you know, I'm not trying to control people. I, I don't want to control people. That's why some people don't even come to me and ask for anything, because I don't tell you what to do. You know, that a lot of people don't even ask me things. It's not because I'm not intelligent, not because I can't give you an answer, not because I don't have an opinion. Of course I have an opinion, just like you. But I, to tell you what to do, is not my place. It's the Holy Ghost's place. Don't get mad at me if I don't tell you how you ought to live. What choice you ought to make. Go to your Bible and trust the Lord. That's what you do. I'll be here to support you. I'll cheer you on. I'll even give you and share wisdom. But you make the choice as to what you're doing. I will do my best to give wisdom because the Holy Spirit does speak through uh, us as individuals. Who gives us? We'll speak wisdom. But again, 
<laughs> it's the Lord's job to tell you what to do. And you need to accept that. Quit trying to find the easy way. Of, so, you know one of the problems I don't like to tell people what to do? Because if it doesn't work, guess who they blame? <laughs> well, pastor said... <laughs> well, he said to do this, and it slumped. Guess that man ain't anointed. It. it may have been the exact thing you do. But if you don't do it under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost, it isn't going to work anyway. God is a one-on-one -on -one God here. You're my brother and sister, but, you know, father is father. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't get mad at me if I don't tell you what to do. Hallelujah. You know, there, there, there's, there's always people trying to control people. And one of the easiest examples is, is like some of these politicians and stuff. They're always trying to tell us and put burden, burdensome restrictions on us. It is, it's an infringement on our liberty. And some people don't like that, but I don't care. You know, that the Bible said, that, why do you think people left Europe, okay? They left because of the tyrannical government, okay? And the punishment, the interference and punishment that the, 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 those who were in charge were exacting on the believers of God who didn't believe exactly like they do, who doesn't think exactly like they do. And for whatever reason, people just love to, to make you think like them. Well, not going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my own brain, and I listen to the Lord, and I study his word, and I let him talk to me. You know, I like what uh, Acts 5, 29, it says, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. He was talking to a bunch of leaders. Well, that's the same way I... That's like just the early founding fathers. For example, John Adams said, "Liberty must all at all liberty must at all hazards be supported. We have a right to it, derived derived from our Maker. But if we had not, our fathers have earned and brought it for us at the expense of their ease, their estates, their pleasure, and their blood." That's John Adams. This is one of my favorite quotes from Benjamin Franklin. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. He's absolutely right. I put my trust in the Lord. I don't trust you as a person. You know what I'm saying? I trust the Lord. Because everybody, every, everyone that's flesh and blood except Jesus have, has failed. Every one of us. So that's why God always constantly puts our, tells us to trust in Him. Follow His way. But if you give it up, there's freedom that you need to walk in the Lord and it's given to you by God. Now Peter wrote about the importance of casting our care also. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. I'll let you get there. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 7. One of my very first Christian books that I ever read was by Brother Hagen called Casting Your Care. And it made an impact in my life. I didn't even realize who he was. I just read a book and it was all good and Bible, so I liked it. Didn't know Brother Hagen. I ended up going to school, Rhema. But I didn't know. When the Lord told me to go to Rhema, I was like, who is this? I read his book. Of course, I was a teenager, so it was easy to miss things. <laughs> but when I saw it and I figured it out and I connected the two, I said, oh, no wonder I like that book. <laughs> he, he, quotes out of the, he quotes out of the Amplified Classic, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, 7. That's what I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic. It's not the Amplified, it's the Amplified Classic. Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. That's real important. If you, as long as you keep control of it, then God has no control of it. 
Amen. Yeah. See, humble yourself, lower your own, yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God. Now, I'm not saying lower yourself to anything, but God's mighty hand? Yeah. Yeah, I, most certainly. He, he's almighty God, and his hand is mighty. Hallelujah. Amen. When I'm lowering that, that's because I know his hand is mighty. I don't have to worry about anything. Then in due time, he may exalt you. See, a lot of people want to get from A to A, A to B or A to Z without going through the rest of the alphabet. You know, you got to allow the Lord to do it in his way. He will get you from A to Z quickly, rather, a lot of times. He does. But you, you got to do what verse 7 says. Casting the whole, everybody say whole, as oh. in W-H-O-L-E. Whole, all of it. That means there's not one ounce of care you keep. Not one ounce of care that you cast. And by the way, that's what, exactly what that Greek word means. Cast means to throw like bolos, uh, like a ball. Throw it. Cast it. Not, not just a little toss. No. I'm getting out of my hand quickly. And the catcher catches it. That's good. And it says what? Casting the whole of your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. Everybody say once and for all. Is that pretty conclusive? I, and, and that is exactly a great way to define what's being written here when you go to the Greek and all. Once and for all. How many have you, times have you picked that care, or that concern, that worry back out of the lap of the Lord and started thinking about how to fix it yourself? Come on now. Look, we're all tempted that way. I get it. But don't fall for temptation. You throw it once for all. That's it. The catcher got it. I'm not getting that ball back. The catcher gets it. The umpire takes the ball from the catcher. And then he calls the shot. That's how it works. You, If you get that ball back because you won't let the catcher give it to the umpire... You're going to still carry the care, and you're not going to get the benefit of casting that care. All you have is all the worry with no help from God. Because you're not letting God help you. Not because he doesn't want to. Because you're not letting him. And it says, on him, who casts once and for all on him, who cares for you affectionately. God has some real care for you. He really does love you. Everybody say, God really loves me. He really does love you. It says he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. He's even got his eyes on you constantly, 24-7. Like that lady, like that lady who was asked, you know, that you know, the Germans were bombing and uh they were wondering uh oh what you know what happened to that old lady? Because they hadn't seen her day, because everybody else ran into the <coughs> ran into the um you know the bomb shelter. Or trying to take cover. She lived up on a, on, on, a, on a higher level floor. And then they saw her. They thought they didn't see her in the, the bomb shelter. They, they thought that maybe she died got in the bombing. Then a couple of days later, she emerges. And they said, where have you been all this time? Well, I've been in my room. My house. My apartment. Were you not aware of the bombs? Oh, that. Well, I, I, I just, I, you know, the Bible says that God never sleeps or slumbers, but I figure I'm going to bed and not let them <laughs> Not worry about the mom. If he's going to stay awake, no, be, no, no bother me staying awake. I'm going to sleep. Huh? Come on now. Yeah, did it blow up around her? Yeah, but her place was safe and secure. Why? She, well, she cast her care on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> She put her care on the Lord. She let it in his hand and didn't take it back. Then she emerges a couple days later because she needs to get some stuff or do something or just get a breath of fresh air or something. Who knows? Amen. She emerged. You'll emerge too. You'll carry on in your life. If you you know what? You'll 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 care, you'll live without having to worry. That's right. That's true. 
You live your life day after day without a, having an ounce of worry. If you will submit to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is God's word good this morning or what? Amen. And if that isn't any if that isn't good enough, even in the Old Testament. Let's read Psalm fifty five, twenty two, and again the other five six. Cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it, and he will sustain you. Amen. He will never allow the consistently righteous be, to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. You see, you're not walking in your righteousness if you're carrying all your cares. Jesus' ministry is there to catch your cares. He's right that part of his work that he's doing today is to catch your cares. And all the weight of it, too. Think about that. All the weight of it. Some of us could be facing some big problems. Jesus, you're, by the Holy Spirit, inspired the psalmist to say, cast the weight of it. All of it. You don't think God doesn't know just how important this thing gets taken care of? Of course he does. And that's why you cast your care on the wall. Amen. Again, if you take back your cares, take it all away from Jesus, he's not able to do his current day ministry with you. You've got to give it to him and leave it there. That's his ministry. That's what he's doing in our lives. He is there as that support and life. He is our life giver. So get your mind on the kingdom of God rather than on your own concerns. You know, if you'll take care of kingdom business, God will take care of your business. Okay? I'm amazed. Like last year, some of the, the cost of some of these outreaches that we uh, did last year. You, you, you understand? God supplies those people. The plane tickets, the, the finances for things in, in supernatural ways. And they were able to reach people with all kinds of methods and things, and and bring people in from all around, from all around all around the country. Bring them in to minister to the people right here in Montgomery County in this region. And he supplied all their needs. It was amazing. Take care of kingdom business, then God will take care of your business. Another way he's ministering to us is by directing us in love and sanctification. You see, when you walk in the love of God, you're going to start, you'll separate yourself unto the Lord. That's called sanctification. Uh, some people keep acting like the church has failed. There are religions who teach that the church has failed. But it hasn't failed because it's as a, the church is based on Jesus, not based on the people yeah. and whom he saved. Amen. Uh, it's based on the head, not the not the whole body. However, when the whole body does operate in union with the head, guess what? You'll get in that. You'll get in. You'll be that answer too. You'll be that part participant in the in the things that Jesus is doing on this earth today, getting us ready for His return. Um, and the apostles never believed that. They never believed that that the church is going to fail. That it won't make it. That Oh, you know, when when John died out and everybody, you know, then, then that was it, man. You know, the church was going to pot. No, it's not. It's based on Jesus, who is sanctifying the church presently. He's sanctifying us. He's calling us. He's separating us from this world. Aren't you glad that you are not numbered with the world? Amen. So don't throw your lot in with them either. Amen. You stay out of the worldliness. And it's lust. You stay out of it. Look, I know we're all faced with it. We all fall into it somewhere, sometime. Confess your sins, move on. Stay sanctified unto the Lord. There's a holiness. You're born again with holiness, so you can walk in holiness. And you have everything by that divine nature to walk in the holiness of God. Amen. And the power of God. And, and you know, uh, let's go to First Thessalonians 3. Just a couple of scriptures here I'm going to read. First Thessalonians 3, 11. 
verse. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ, this is ministry, direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in the holiness before our God and the Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Let's go page over to the 25th verse, 23rd verse. Now may the God of peace, or shalom, himself sanctify you completely. I mean, completely separate you from this world and this world system. Amen. Amen. You know, the world system is failing. But God's system never fails. Because it's based on God and his word. And since he created everything in this world with his word... That means it, this, everything in this world works with his word. And when that word comes out of your mouth, it's going to work with your word. When it works with your word, all your needs will be met. Amen. And, all, and all the separation that you need to do from the world and worldly lusts goes away. The, I mean, the devil will try to mess with you, I'm sure, yeah. but you don't have to concede. See, it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, that's getting born again, soul, that's a renewed mind, and body, that's a healed body till we get a new one. Amen. Amen. Did, 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 did the Lord leave anything out in this present day ministry? Spirit, soul, and body, didn't he? That means everything. Everything. Everything be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus hasn't failed the church. The church hasn't failed. It's being sanctified by him presently. That's his ministry. He's calling us. He's constantly calling us to get out of the world's way of thinking. Constantly calling us to not be numbered with the sinners and be numbered with the saints. Amen? Yeah. That's what he's constantly doing. 24th verse. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So, any, you know, according to the apostles, that Jesus will sanctify and keep his body separate from the world. Now, what you need to do is condition your mind to be renewed to that and walk accordingly. And it's not really all that complicated. It may seem more complicated than it really is, but it really isn't all that complicated. One more, one more verse in Revelation chapter 5. One more passage there. I'm going to read in Revelation 5. And then we're going to end. Revelation 5, 8 verse. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb each having a harp and the golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That means all our prayers is kept there. Think about it. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain. You have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen. And now we're back to that again. He intercedes. He stands in the gap. He bridges us to the Father. And he, and he calls us to be priests, to be kings, and reign. Reign. You, you don't need to be caught up in this world system, and you don't need to be dragged down by it. Put your faith in the Lord. Amen. Put your trust in the Lord. We have nothing to worry about because he has caused us to have his victory. He's the king and priest of all of us kings and priests. Amen. Amen. And if you want to be called a queen, I guess that's okay too, but the Bible says king. <laughs> And so we reign in life with him. So he's guiding us life 
He's guiding us in this life to the end. Amen. Amen. That's his present day ministry. Jesus is working. He's busy. He's busy with us. Let's be busy with him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for letting us know and helping us to have our full faith in you as the present day Lord and Savior that you are, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for dwelling in us, bearing witness in our hearts, things that we need to know and do. We just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't have the bulletin.